What? That's loud. It's loud. Do it. Okay. All right. Well, we didn't expect for it to not give us any trouble, so it's all right. I got them used to the uh, song books. <laughs> so uh, it's time. It's, it's time for us to begin this morning. We might be running just a little bit late, and uh, we expect to have some technical difficulties. We do have a new sound system installed, so we're glad to have that. And uh, that doesn't come without kinks, of course. So if we have some kinks and you have to go back to the book, uh, y'all know how to do that. We've got you trained on that pretty good. So, First song, 296. 296. <clears throat> Let's sing. We have come into his house and gathered in his name to worship him. We have come into his house and gathered in his name to worship him. We have come into his house and gathered in his name to worship Christ the Lord. Worship him, Christ the Lord. Let's forget about ourselves and magnify his name and worship him. Let's forget about ourselves and magnify his name and worship him. Let's forget about ourselves and magnify his name and worship Christ the Lord. Worship him, Christ the Lord. Amen. Well, we do certainly want to uh, welcome you here this morning. We appreciate very much your presence and we appreciate uh, you being here. If you're joining us inside this morning or if you're joining us in the car, listening on your radio, we certainly want to welcome you uh, and, and make you feel a part of us. Uh, we want to uh, remember all of those that we have on our prayer list. We also want to remember uh, any, if we don't have any updates on any of those, so if you know of anything that needs to be announced, please let us know. We do have those that we've been praying for that are doing better, and we're thankful for those answered prayers. So we want to continue to remember those that uh, are awaiting some upcoming test results, those that are still going through treatments, and we appreciate your prayers for all of those. Again, if there's any updates we need to make, let us know. We'll get those things announced. I did mention that we had uh, a new sound system, so we're working. It's been so long since we have used the PowerPoint presentation, we're probably all going to have to be retrained on that. So uh, bear with us as we have any, any problems. I think we've got some, uh, a little bit of noise that we're still dealing with, uh, but uh, we're, we're doing a little better than what we were, so we're, we're glad that we're to the point that we are. But, but bear with us, please. Thank you. 968 will be our next song. 968. <clears throat> Will they tell me of a home? We'll sing verses 1 and 4 of the song. Let's sing. Oh, they tell me of a home far beyond the skies. Oh, they tell me of a home far away. Oh, they tell me of a home where no storm clouds rise. Oh, they tell me of a clouded day oh the land of cloudless day oh the land of an unclouded sky oh they tell me of a home where no storm clouds rise oh they tell me of an unclouded day oh they tell me that he smiles on his 
children there and his smile drives their sorrows away and they tell me that no tears ever come again in that lovely land of unclouded day oh the land of cloudless Oh, they tell me of a home where no storm clouds rise. Oh, they tell me of an unclouded day. Amen. This morning, before we have our scripture reading and our opening prayer, we'll sing number four. Number four, to God be the glory. <clears throat> Let's sing. To God be the glory, great things He had done. So loved He the world that He gave us His Son, who yielded His life and atonement for sin, and opened the life gate that all the earth hear his voice. Praise the Lord. Let the people rejoice. Oh, come to the Father through Jesus the Son and give him the glory. Great things he had done. Great things he had taught us great things he had done and great how rejoicing through Jesus the Son but purer and higher and greater will be our wonder our transport when Jesus we see. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, let the earth hear His voice. Praise the Lord, let the people rejoice. Oh, come to the Father through Jesus the Son, and This morning's scripture reading comes from Romans uh, chapter 1, verse 18. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of man, who suppresses the truth and unrighteousness. Let's go to God in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we humbly come before you this morning, thanking you for this day and the many blessings. And we thank you for this opportunity that we have to be here this morning to sing praises to you in just a minute, to gather around the Lord's table and hear another portion of your word. We pray that we do these things in accordance to your will. And we also pray that we lift our hearts and minds to you this morning in peace, Father. And we pray that when we hear the lesson this morning, that we can apply it to our lives, Father, and preach it to others. We thank you so much for Brother Russell and his wife that are here with us. We pray for those that are in the hospitals, those that are mentioned sick, and we have several of those. We pray that you would be with them, that you would let them gain their health and take their regular steps in life. Again, Father, we thank you for all that you do for us. And we pray that you forgive us when we fall short. And it's in Jesus' name. Amen. As we prepare our minds for take the Lord's Supper, we'll sing number 349. 349. 
We'll sing verses 1 and 4 of this song. Let's sing. They bound the hands of Jesus in the garden where he prayed. They led him through the streets in shame. They spat upon the Savior so pure and free from sin. Said, crucify him, he's to blame. He could have called ten thousand angels to destroy the world and set him free. He could have called ten thousand angels, but he died alone. for this opportunity to come around your table and we do this because we are commanded to do so and willingly come here wanting to please you and do what is correct and right in your sight and remember as he said do this in remembrance of me father we thank you so much for the body of christ we thank you so much for for what he's done for us and we pray, Father, as we partake of this bread, which to us represents his body, as it hung on the cross between heaven and earth, we pray, Father, that you'll be pleased with how we do it and what we do it, being, being your children. And as always, we pray in his name, Jesus the Christ. Amen. Again, let's go to God in prayer, please. Father, again, we gather around your table this time to partake of the fruit of the vine, which to us as Christians represents your son's shed blood on the cross for the remission of our sins. And we know that this is the only blood that can do that. We thank you, Father, for his willingness to come, your willingness to send him, and our willingness now to be around him, his table. Please be with us, and we pray that as we partake of this, we do so that is pleasing to you, for we pray in his name, Jesus the Christ. Amen. And that concludes the Lord's Supper. As a reminder, which you all don't need, but... We are very well blessed, and we are greatly blessed, not very well, greatly blessed. And we thank God for that each and every day. It takes effort and it takes funds to keep God's word out and running and going to the different places in the world, and this community even. 
So as we give back, we are doing as he commanded to do with a cheerful heart. We pray that he'll do great things with this. Let's go to God again in prayer. Father God, we thank you so much for the opportunity to come around and, and give back to you a portion of which you so richly have blessed us. And you have blessed us, and we thank you. We pray, Father, that, that as we give back, you'll see our hearts that are happy and cheerful doing it, and that you will take these funds and do great things with them and proclaim your son's name throughout this community and the world. We pray, Father, that, that as we give back, that you are happy with how we do it. For we pray in your son's name, Jesus the Christ. Amen. Our next song will be number 860. 860. There is a habitation. <clears throat> Sing verses 1, 2, and 4 of this song. Let's sing. There is a habitation built by the to mark your bush you can do that at page 903 page 903 will be your invitation song this morning song before brother Russ brings us our lesson will be 895 895 I'll live in glory <clears throat> sing verses 1 and 3 if you'd like you may stand maybe 1, 2 and 3 we'll sing whatever shows up how about that I'd like to stay here longer than man's allotted days And watch the fleeting changes of life's uneven ways But if my Savior calls me to that sweet home on high I'll live with Him forever in glory by and by Oh yes, I'll live in glory by and by I'll tell and sing love story there on high. There with my dear Redeemer, no more to die. 
Oh, yes, I'll live in glory by and by. I want to be of service along this pilgrim way and lead the lost to Jesus as fervently I pray. As day by day I travel, I'll keep him ever nigh and live with him forever in glory by and by. Oh, yes, I'll live in glory by and by. I'll tell and sing love story there on high. There with my dear Redeemer, no more to die. Oh, yes, I'll live in glory by and by. The end I know is nearing, by faith I look away to yonder home supernal, the land of endless day. I'll cling to him forever and <coughs> the sky and live with him forever in glory by and by oh yes i'll live in glory by and by i'll tell and sing love story there on high there with my dear redeemer no more to die oh yes i'll live in glory by and by, oh yes, I'll live in glory, by and by. Yeah. Good morning, everyone. We have a wonderful accumulation in the auditorium. We have those who are gathered together here with us outside, and it is indeed an honor and a joy to be able to come to you in this hour, to be able to welcome you, and to be thankful that we're able to share a few moments how that you and I can have the joy and the hope of knowing that in the great by and by, our Lord and our God wants and desires all of God's children to come home. It is with this joy that I look out and I see Nelson and Debbie with us this morning. Uh, it's a joy to be able to have good friends and great Christian friends to be a part of our services and our uh, study this morning from the Word of God. I thank these young men. We are blessed at this congregation, are we not? Young men who help to lead in prayer, who read reverently and uh, uh, the good word of God so that we can have at least some clarity of where we're going to begin. On Sunday mornings in the Bible study hour, we are studying from the book of Romans, those 16 chapters that Paul has dedicated that inspired pen to, to encourage, to uplift, and to help all of us be where we need to be in our relationship to our Heavenly Father. Throughout God's Word, God's Word lifts us and encourages us to live the life so that we will be one day blameless and without reproach when we stand before our Heavenly Father. The scripture that was written, read, written by the Apostle Paul says, For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against ungodliness, who hold the truth in unrighteousness. Chapters 1 through 3 of the book of Romans is designed to help us understand that in the judgment of God, and that's why we're talking about this morning, the judgment of God, that you and I are in great need for the salvation, for the grace, mercy, goodness, forgiveness, that our God is offering, willing to give, as He always has done, from the crucifixion, the cross of our Lord who hung there, suspended between heaven and earth, of uh, the joy that you and I might hold of being able to be in heaven together. 
knowing that this word is there, knowing that we can look at it and I hope glean from it some great lessons this morning. I want to first suggest to you in the writings that are found within these three chapters, what Paul said in verse 2 of chapter 2, he said, but we are sure that the judgment of God is according to truth against them which commit such things. Now if you picture this as somewhat of a courtroom, Paul is writing his words of inspiration and he says, I want to bring all of you together so that we can understand what we're talking about, so that we can be together on this subject. Uh, why he said, as he did, the wrath of God is revealed. There from verse 18 is where I'm coming from. The revelation of the judgment of God is going to be real. The judgment of God is going to be several things. This morning, it is going to be in truth, the truth of God. We'll study a lesson, I hope, tonight to, that God's judgment is impartial because these are just a couple of points that the Apostle Paul is going to make. But the judgment of God is true. When you read here like I've studied and been in court a lot of times, you know, Judge Grider has been in uh, the store a couple of times. Don Word has been in there. Judge Graham, John Graham, he's, I've been a part of his process from time to time. You understand somewhat of a courtroom scene. And when the judge who is sitting there listening to the things that are going to be brought before him, his inevitable object is to know whether or not the things said are true. The things that the Apostle Paul writes about humanity are true. They're true from the standpoint of 20 years ago when over 2,000 people died from the Twin Towers because of the evil, because of the sin, because of the ungodliness of their lives to believe in the one and only true and living God flew two aircraft into those Twin Towers. It was an act of sin. It was an act of violence. It was an act of anger. That took place, not only there, but in the Pentagon, not only in that great field that we look out upon those souls who were willing to, to fight among the evil men who had captured control of that plane and said, we are willing of ourselves rather than suffer the consequences of what might happen to a magnitude of others. We will take it upon ourselves to bring it down. Phone calls were made. Records have been kept. Tears have been shed by wives and parents and children for some 20 years to realize that the one and true and living God who sits upon the throne of heaven and earth looks down upon the world at large and says, I accuse you. The accusations that the apostle writes here concerning the judgment of God, concerning the perversions of the people of the world, he says, there are sins that you are committing. You see, the judge has to make everything just. Everyone has to be equal. And God, in the offering of His Son, our Lord and our Savior, looks into the world at large so that we truly can understand Paul's statement in Romans chapter 3, all have sinned, and come short of the glory of God. The wages of sin is death. So Paul writes first of all about the judgment of God in the accusations that are going to be made. Verses 19 through 23 of Romans chapter 1 talks about the sin of arrogance. The sin of arrogance. 
because that which may be known of God is manifest in them, for God has showed it unto them. There are those who are without excuse, because God has revealed himself unto all in the things that he has made. The invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen. They're not obscure. They're not dim lidded Everything that one would come to know in seeking God can be clearly seen because God has manifested it. There will be no excuse that any individual might have before the judgment seat of God because they could not know God. God has manifested himself from the creation of the world, clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even the eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. Our God who sits upon the throne, whom we will understand later in later lessons in John chapter 6, dedicated this judgment unto His Son, our Lord and our Savior. But God who is judge of the world looking out there said, you stand accused because of the arrogance of your life. You're not willing to recognize me as God. You're not ready to recognize me in my power, in my majesty, in my glory. We see the world where God has been taken out of the world so much, and if you let a world run rampant without God then there is nothing but the depreciation and the degradation of spirit and actions that take place in the world. We know that from 20 years ago. We will know that 20 years from today if my Lord doesn't come. Man is guilty of sin. And the first sin is the arrogance of sin. These accursed actions are brought forth in verses 24 and 25. Wherefore God also gave them up to uncleanness through the lust of their own hearts, to dishonor their own bodies between themselves, who changed the truth of God into a lie and worshiped the creature more than the Creator who is blessed forever. Amen. They committed the sin not only of arrogance, but because of their accursed actions in refusing God, they stood guilty before God. Remember, Paul said, For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness. Paul is exposing ungodliness. He is exposing unrighteousness. They gave themselves over to unholy affections verses that you and I have read to go likewise men leaving the natural use of the woman burned in their own lust one toward another men working that which is unseemly receiving in themselves that recompense of error which was fitting even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge God gave them over to a reprobate mind to do those things which are not Convenient. Can you imagine God giving up on you because you refuse to accept Him as God? We refuse to obey His Word. By refusing to obey His Word, like the Bible says, is a confession of the lack of love that we have of God. He said, if you love me, keep my commandments so when we forget to love God by not keeping his word then we stand ready to face the wrath of God because of our unrighteous deeds not only does Paul point out in the accusation of this courtroom if you please but he points out their accountability how that they are accountable for the very actions that they have done. Verse 32 says of chapter 1, Who knowing the judgment of God, that they which commit such things are worthy of what? Death. The wages of sin is death. Death awaits all by the judgment decree of the Almighty God if we continue and want to live in unrighteousness. If we want to live in sin. 
I notice that Paul mentions here by inspiration accomplices. You know, usually you find someone driving the car during a time of a bank robbery. Sometimes you find someone like on uh, Wyatt Earp's late, late movie last night that I was standing up and watch, and he was uh, wanting to know what this old Clanton uh, worker was doing when his son, when his brothers were killed. He said, well, I was just standing out on the corner. I was watching. I was the watchman. Well, what were you doing when they gunned down my brother? I was watching. Where were you? I was on the corner looking around. We all know the inevitable outcome if you've watched that movie six times like I have. He was an accomplice. He was an accomplice. He was there apart. Paul said by inspiration right here, the Bible says which commit things are worthy of death, not only do the same, but have pleasure in them that do them. Paul is going to point out in chapters 1, 2, and 3, as he is exposing the world at large, people we will call the Gentile world, are also going to be faced with those who are on the outside looking in and said, well, I don't care what they're doing. Beloved, there was a little bitty fella who thought it so noteworthy in his life that he climbed a little sycamore tree to see Jesus. And I loved that little old song. You know, we've got a lot of young people a part of our congregation. And they come to know that little old song in, the, in times past. Zacchaeus was a little bitty man. A little bitty man was he. He climbed up in a sycamore tree, the good Lord for to see. You know what he wanted to see? Jesus told him. The Son of Man came into this world to seek and to save the lost. The lost are those who are sinning. Those who are committing such acts of unrighteousness and godliness because they won't let God into their life. And their actions show that. But what is so worrisome for so many is there are so many who are standing by the side saying, that's okay, let the world go on. We don't understand. It's like the gentleman holding up his camera, videotaping that great fight where somebody probably pulls out a knife and slashes somebody's throat and did not lift a hand to help them. In the day of judgment, you will find yourself just as guilty as the person with a knife. That's what the Bible is saying to us right here. We are responsible of being able to take the saving grace of the gospel of Jesus Christ to a lost and dying world. You don't have to be a great preacher or a little preacher like me. You don't have to be an elder. You don't have to be a deacon. You just have to be a Christian. Are you a Christian this morning? Have you given your life to Jesus Christ? When the wrath of God is going to be revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness, where will you stand at the judgment bar? Have you been standing on the outside idle has your life really not been involved in the body of Christ? Are you like that limb that when I met that poor old gentleman the other day who, who didn't have an arm because it wouldn't work? Are you like that soul because you're not helping the body? Let me ask you to reach out and help the body. To reach out and become that member of the body that means so much to every moment of the body. This morning, you can't see it from there. We don't have a good camera yet, Andy. But I put a piece of a toothpick right there in that one little bitty finger. Y'all know what hurt? <laughs> My whole body hurt. Bleeding everywhere. Didn't know if I was going to get it stopped. 
There's not one of you, one of us, either in this auditorium, listening out in the parking lot, those who have tuned in because you as God's children have asked your friends and your neighbors to turn on the radio this morning to listen to some good old-fashioned gospel preaching. That we ourselves are all important in the eyes of God. When we stand before God in the day of judgment, we will stand not collectively, we will stand individually. And you will give an account of the things done in your body, whether they have been good or whether they have been bad. Well, Brother Russ, I had not done anything bad. Have you done any good? Have you done any good? We all have to become involved. You see, the gospel of Jesus Christ will make those accusations against sins of arrogance. Well, I don't have to. It will make those accusing remarks about those accursed actions that we have taken. But for him that knoweth to do good and do it not to him, it is sin. The sin of omission is as guilty as the sin of the actual act of commission. We need to get back to preaching the gospel this way. You know why? Romans, like the rest of the New Testament, wants us to be blameless and spotless and without reproof when the Lord comes again. How many of those 2,000 individuals that you and I have watched and re-watched the videos thought they were going to die that day? How many of them did you see waving out the window of that multi-story building? How many of you saw oh, the sight jump from thousands of feet Death is coming. Death is coming to all of us. 11 year old boy was buried in Jackson County last week. 11 years old. Young people, the gospel of Jesus Christ is for you, like Timothy and all the young men of the New Testament. Old people like me, gray headed. The gospel is for us. The saving grace of Jesus Christ is for us. He should be our Lord and our master and our teacher to do the bidding of compassion and kindness and goodness that's out there. We will stand accountable. Paul says right here in these words, Therefore thou art inexcusable, old man, whosoever thou art that judgest, for wherein thou judgest another, thou condemnest thyself, for thou that judgest dost the same thing. You know who the Lord is leaving out when it comes to judgment? Nobody. We want to point an accusing finger over here. None of us are without sin. That's me included. None of us. We need Jesus. He is our Lord, our Savior. He is the one who and whom we give our lives and the joy of our lives to. Paul said right here in these words, Thinkest thou this, O man, that judges them that do such things and, the, and doest the same thing, that thou shalt escape the judgment of God? None of us shall escape. None of us. Basically, we have the Gentiles on one hand, the people of the world that Paul is putting here in the majority of chapter 1. In chapter 2, when we talk about the judgment of God is going to be true and factual and, and right down to the nitty-gritty, the judgment of God that will not be impartial. Here we have the Jews accusing the Gentiles of one thing when the Jews themselves are doing the same thing else. You know, if we would do a lot more complimenting one another than complaining about everybody else's faults, we'd get along a little better. Lift up, encourage, strengthen. Do all that you can do. Some of us can do a little that's okay. Compliment the little. And be careful how much burden you push on them when you try to expect a lot. 
the accusations that's made, the accountability that's going to be given. And there's so much more that we need to be talking about, and that's future lessons involved. But the last point I want to make today is a God's appeal to change. God's appeal to change. In the last few moments together, there's a writing, and I want to go a little bit farther over here to Romans chapter 9. I think Paul deals with it again because it is an important subject of the appealing of our Lord. Romans 9, beginning at verse 22, the Bible says, What if God, willing to show His wrath and to make His power known, endured with much long-suffering the vessels of wrath fitted for destruction, and that He might make known the riches of His glory on the vessels of mercy, which He had afore prepared unto glory, even us, whom he hath called not the Jews only, but also the Gentiles. As he hath also in, in Isaiah, I will call them my people which were not my people, and her beloved which was not beloved. And it shall come to pass that in the place where it was said of them, you are not my people, there shall they be called the children of the living God. God makes an appeal. Paul in Romans chapter 2 said in verses 3, And thinkest thou this old man that judgest them which do such things, and dost the same, that thou shalt escape the judgment of God? Do you despise thou the riches of his goodness, or his forbearance, or his long suffering, not knowing that the goodness of God leads you to repentance? I want to tell you how good my God is. How good Jesus Christ is. When we could stand accused and be guilty of the wrath, the full wrath of the judge to be thrown away forever because of our sins and our iniquities, because of the things we have said and done and left undone, when we stood guilty, Christ died for me. Christ died for me. I heard a comment this weekend, and I thought, Paul, there in Romans 5, even when we were without strength, Christ died for me. A good man, some will dare to die. Some of those men that the bell was rung for and women that was rung for this weekend, names that were read, those who had survived with their friends having fallen, was asked a question. Knowing that this kind of tragedy exists and the possibility of your life, life being lost, would you want to be a firefighter? Would you want to be a first responder? They are willing to lay down their lives to save yours and mine. Isn't that amazing? Christ did it when we stood condemned. And maybe stand condemned if you haven't given your life to Christ. But He was willing to die for our sins so that they can be absolved covered up, forever forgotten. And then, you notice there's an and then. We become involved in the little ways that God has given you a ministry, whatever it might be. As a young person, I did it on the football field. I did it in the classroom. I was the, what you call the minister of the beta club. I did this when I was a young person. So young people, it's possible. For those of us who are older, it may be our work environment, maybe our play environment, but here's the point I'm trying to make. We're willing to give of ourselves so that others may be saved. We're willing to give of ourselves so that others may be saved. Even amidst the accusations, even amidst all the accountability of knowing where I stand right now in my relationship with God, how would I fare 
if God were to judge me right now. Have I taken the appeal of God who reaches out and hearing a gospel message like the Apostle Paul has delivered and said, because I love you, because my goodness is good enough for you, because my riches of forgiveness is beyond anything that we could think of the Fort Knox's worth of gold, it's greater than all that. Paul will say in the New Testament, where sin abounded, grace did much more abound. God has more forgiveness for you than you realize. Don't say he can't forgive me. If you believe in him with all of your heart, if you will confess him, he who is worthy of all power and majesty and glory and honor, if you will give he who is Lord of lords and King of kings your life, Confess him with your lips. Repent of those sins saying, Lord, I'm sorry I've ever done them. I'm going to live for you now and not for the Satan, the old devil. Then I want to ask you here in a few moments to come forward. Make that sweet confession. To be immersed in a watery grave of baptism. Where the Bible says, God says, you will be raised to walk in newness of life. Born again, a child of God. You who because of your sins are not a child of God right now. He will make a child of God because of his goodness. Because of his riches. Because of his long suffering. He's been waiting on some of you for quite a while. But he's still waiting while we have that opportunity. Won't you give him your life? He loves you that much. Love Him that much. By surrendering your life to Him for the first time, or if we as God's children need forgiveness, you know that we love one another. We love God. And we will pray with you and for you that all of that shall be resolved because He, our Lord and our Savior, gives us that chance. Would you come while together we stand and while we sing? Would you be free from the burden of sin? There's power in the blood, power in the blood. Would you or evil a victory win? There's wonderful power in the blood. There is power, power, wonder-working power in the blood. Of the Lamb, there is power, power, wonder-working power in the precious blood of the Lamb. Would you do service for Jesus, your King? There's power in the blood, power in the blood. Would you live daily His praises to sing? There's wonderful power in the blood. There is power, power, wonder-working power in the blood of the Lamb. There is power, power, wonder-working power in the precious blood of the Lamb. <clears throat> See, that didn't phase you at all, right? <laughs> Thank you, Brother Russ, for that lesson. We appreciate that. Uh, he mentioned uh, what happened on 9-11 20 years ago. And a few years back, Kim and I were, were on a road trip with a couple of friends of ours. And... Uh, we were driving up through Pennsylvania. Anytime I'm on a road trip, I'll, I'll add in a little business. So it had to start in, in Pittsburgh, and we, we went there. And from there, we were going over to, uh, uh, well, that left me, Gettysburg. Eventually, we were going to wind up in Gettysburg. But we stopped at the, uh, the site uh, where the plane crashed in Pennsylvania there. And, and there's a, a great memorial. If you're ever up that way, there's it's a fantastic memorial. You walk around, and you can see exactly where the plane crashed. And you see those... I'll call, I'll call them heroes there that, uh, and just imagine, I believe this plane was destined for the Capitol. 
Uh, that was its destination, if you will. And, uh, and they saved so many lives there by their actions that they took that day. Uh, but they gave their own. Uh, but anyway, touching, and I appreciate you mentioning that. And, and the things that, we, that you saw and that they went through, may we never forget those things. And sin caused it all, and he's exactly right. But thank you for being here this morning. Uh, thank you for joining us in the parking lot. If you're listening to us on the radio, we appreciate it very much. And believe me, you are present with us. You're present with us in spirit if you're there in your cars, and we're glad that you are here. We have a good number out there, and we have a great number in here. We're glad to see you. And I, I continue to solicit your prayers for uh, the decisions. I know that there are some local churches that are they're closing down just because of, a, of an abundance of caution. And we solicit your prayers for, for this congregation that we do not have any issues dating with this. Uh, we know that, that COVID is, is all around us and when we hear about it, but we do not want to give up our, our opportunities to worship and spend time in worship to God. So we solicit your prayers going forward for the decisions that we make or we have to make uh, because we're all on uncharted territory, believe me. We've been down this road, we've done things differently and... Uh, and do, uh, use an abundance of caution, wear your mask, uh, social distance, do those things that you can to try to help uh, prevent those things. We don't know if they work, but, but do those out of an abundance of caution. And we thank you for that. And again, please continue in prayer for us. Continue in prayer for all of those that are on our list that you know about. If there are updates to make, uh, yes, there's updates to make. Come on. I know several of you are interested in Lisa uh, Stone. There's not any good news, but there's not bad news either. And it's weird how it's like a roller coaster. One week she's good, one week she's not doing so good. The latter part of this week, uh, Tuesday morning she woke up, she had a fever of 102. She finally got that down. Thursday she's back to normal temperature, if you will. Also as well, she's down to 60% on the ventilator. So she's doing well this latter part of the week. They appreciate your prayers, and I hope that you would keep praying for her. Let's just hope she's able to get what they call a trach, I think. That gives her food. That's what she needs right now. Um, so I'm not sure what causes her to get that trach, what, what, what is good, considering to the doctors, but we hope that she does that. As soon as she does that, doctors say that she'll be okay. But she needs that trach at the moment. So just keep praying for her and Jake and his dad as well. Thank you. Thank you, Andrew, for that update. We'll sing uh, 414, closing song, and uh, we'll sing one verse, and after that we'll be dismissed in prayer. Be back this evening at 6 o'clock, and we'll spend more time in worship to God. Thank you again for being here. All right, let's sing. Anywhere with Jesus I can safely go. Anywhere He leads me in this world below. Anywhere without Him dearest joys would fade. Anywhere with Jesus I am not afraid. Anywhere, anywhere, fear I cannot know. Anywhere with Jesus I can safely go. Thank you for this another beautiful Lord's Day. Father, we thank you for the opportunity we had to come today, go to our classes, to sing these songs and meet around the uh, Lord's table and hear another great portion of thy word. Father, we continue to pray for those on our prayer list, pray for those of our congregation. And Father, we pray for those that has had COVID. And Father, we pray that you look down on them and comfort them in a way that only you know how. Father, we ask you now to go with us as we enjoy the rest of your day. And Father, we ask that you forgive us for our sin when our life is over on this earth. We pray that we can spend eternity with you in heaven. These blessings that we ask in thy son's name, Jesus the Christ. Amen.